Yo, what on guys? Will and DJ with Gutter Fighting Secrets. We just came off Operation Winter Forge. Two days of solid winter warfare training over with SNS Training Solutions in Ullman, Missouri. Highly recommend you check these guys out. So we're coming off this course. We're gonna both go our separate ways later today, but we wanted to put together a few close quarters combatives uh, YouTube things for you guys. Right now we've been working hard on our certification process for modern gutter fighting. Deej is uh, really working hard. I'm fucking busting my balls on it, but we've decided to actually go ahead and give you guys some straight out of the book stuff for free here on YouTube. So thank me later, but thank me later with money would be great. Just kidding, not really. All right, Deej, let's get into some solid um, grappling training. So I really want to get into this because obviously winter, winter warfare, uh, a lot of layers are worn, right? Yeah. Yep. And a we need to be good at working with clothing, working with material, hoods, uh, collars on hoodies and jackets, sleeves, things like this. Now we can learn a lot working with gi jiu-jitsu and judo and things like that. This is why the Marine Corps went to combat judo shortly after World War II, or actually during World War II. During. Uh, so a lot of this stuff is highly applicable, again, for what BDUs, um, over jackets, and even civilian context, just a guy with a Carhartt jacket on, we can really take advantage of this. So a lot of the times what we're gonna happen in a street fight, which you guys who watch my stuff know, I always harp on, we're gonna get to this range and then it's gonna get to this range somehow, right? So once it gets there, what do we do? Do we just hug it up and try to like put his hoodie up and give him knees? Yeah, a little bit, but a lot of the times it's gonna be a grapple like this. Starting to grab a sleeve is a really good idea, all right? So there's a right way and a wrong way to grab a sleeve, right? We can grab it and just grab a hold of it, but DJ, if you rip out, he rips out, right? So how do we go ahead and really grab something to maximize our ability to hold on to it while he's also trying to hit me in the head, right? I'm also actively trying to discourage his strikes. I'm getting a swimming in, right? So I really need to be on point that I don't lose that grip, because if I lose that grip, he's gonna get the underhooks on me, right? I lose that grip, DJ punches under this armpit, like this, and then he grabs me up under this armpit, like that, and he can really start doing some damage and getting a good takedown on me. So I want to avoid that. What do I do? I take my grip, and I get a thumb here on the outside. I then go ahead, elbow down, I twist it like this, and I twist it here, right? So DJ, go ahead and try to pull out now. It's a lot harder. Number one, my elbow is tucked in, it's in, and I'm not giving him that room. Now, if it was out here, these pull out, right? So you see the leverage that we're working with there. As far as I'm gonna get a grip, and I'm also gonna twist that grip and bring this elbow in, it's a lot harder for him to pull out. After I've gotten that grip, I'm worried about two things here. Not only maintaining this grip, but also defending myself, because it's not jujitsu, it's not judo, I'm not just worrying about takedowns. I'm also worried about defending myself. I'm also worried about knee strikes down to my groin, all right? Obviously, guys, people who are fighting you on the street, right, they're not like this untrained opponent that everybody thinks of. Like everyone thinks of, I took two years of Krav, I could fuck somebody up who doesn't know what they're doing. But you have to think about it like this. How often are you getting into fights with people who don't know anything about fighting? Generally, those people steer clear of a fight. So you got to anticipate that your opponent is going to be somewhat trained or experienced, right? There's a, definitely a difference. So if I'm hugging it up with him, I've got that sleeve grip, and he throws a knee, what I need to do is start actively discouraging those knee strikes. We do that by giving him our own knee strikes into the inner thigh, all right? And we just have to be able to anticipate this and then go from there. So we hug it up, I've got my grip, and I'm actively discouraging these knee strikes. Whilst I'm doing that, I want to think about starting to get around. I want to start thinking about getting around to his six o'clock, his back, right? Take the back, the rest is cake from there. How do we do this? Well, we're gonna have to get around these arms. DJ always talks about, with hand-to-hand -hand combatives, the fact that this is arms up here, right? Yep. This is the most likely thing, and DJ, I'll let you kind of take it from there about the arms. Yep. So it, it, it's just a <coughs> natural human reflex that the hands and the arms are going to go around shoulder and chest height, whether it's defensively or going at somebody. 
uh, even towards a choke and things like that, but grabbing the shirt or going in for a hug or a grapple or a clinch, it's all 99.9% .9 of the time is in that range of chest and shoulder height, right in that area. Um, and, and it's going to be somewhat open if they're not being guarded and shielding themselves. So that's something you always need to remember in the core fundamental with most people. If they've got some training, yeah, they're going to not be as atypical as that. But anybody who doesn't have a lot of training or any semblance of training or just thinks they're tough, that's what they're going to go for. Absolutely. You're going to see a lot of collar grabs. You're going to see a lot of net grabbing and a lot of out here like this. So we take advantage of this by going low. The way that we're going to be getting around this, and I'm extremely, extremely popular here. Everybody always calls to congratulate me night and day, so I have to put it on silent to remember that. But the way that we're going to go ahead and get around it here is actually by going low and kind of evading all of this getting outside of that peripheral. So we're here, we've managed to stop it, we've managed to discourage these knees actively. Now we want to start thinking about, and actually I had my elbow up here, but it should be down, guys. I should start thinking about now trying to do a duck under. What I want to do is get under this elbow, not necessarily with this hand, because if I come under here and try to do some BS uh, Aikido thing, like shuck, then what happens? DJ crap me in the fucking in the chin, right? Yeah, so... I can't let that happen. I need to keep defending myself here, defending myself here. All right, now what I want to do is as soon as I can, I do want to lift this elbow up. I want to lift it and get under his arm. All right, now once I'm to his back, it's again going to be a big battle. He's more than likely going to grab my sleeves, right? What we can do here is go ahead and do a filtrum sweep. Boom. And we bring him back like that. After the filtrum sweep, we can start throwing knees into the back of his legs and then obviously work to get that grip free and bring him down, down from there. So we're going to go over that beginning part one more time and then we'll get to the finish off. So it's here, we're swinging at each other and we clench it up. All right, I want to immediately anticipate those knees coming at me. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so while I'm doing that, I want to get a grip, maintain it. Now after that, I want to, at some point, especially while he's throwing his knees, throw it, boom. Then I lift it up, all right? I swim and I duck under. Now on to his rear. Filtrum sweep, boom. After that, I want to get this grip broken. DJ, try to maintain that grip for me. So filtrum sweep, as soon as I get his mind off of what's going on here, with the filtrum sweep, boom. I come out, then I can take this hand, both hands, head, Bring them straight down. Yeah. Yep. Just straight down, and we squat as well. So that's a really viable technique that we can utilize. We'll demonstrate it one more time, and I'll go over it. But I really want you guys to start thinking about getting some grip breaking training in and training with grips. One way that we can do this, if we don't have partners, and we're not going to jujitsu uh, with the geese specifically, uh, we can simply try to practice it on our own, right? Put a hoodie on. A whatever, right? Put a hoodie and just practice getting these grips. Practice maintaining an elbow in. Practice what it feels like to lift someone up with that elbow. And again, it's all about dynamics. It's all about where your elbow is placed. How tight is it? Can I get that surprise at the last minute lifted up, duck under, right? So we're going to be over here. Hey, mother flower, blah, blah, blah. That was my girl, blah, blah, blah. And we hug it up, all right? Anticipate those knees. Boom. Discourage the knees. Lift and go. Now he's got my sleeve here. What I want to do, filtrum sweep, get his mind off. Get it out. Here, and then we squat. Boom. And we bring him straight down. Will this work every time? There's no te technique that ever works every time. If there was, I'd be uh, enrolling in the UFC, and I would be making a lot of money doing that. <laughs> and then this is someone else. Congratulations, Will. You're so amazing at gutter fighting. Thank you, I know. Um, for real, though, guys, train these techniques. Realize that there's no such thing as a 90 or even 100% success rate. Realize that if you've got a technique that can work 50 or 60% of the time, you're well on your way to, um, to becoming a capable, somebody very capable at defending themselves. So, Deej, any last-minute thoughts? 
just remember those fundamentals along with this because that's going to help you in succeeding with this technique and a lot of other techniques is they're going to come out like that or they're going to come up like that, whatever it is. If they're coming up like that, you can probably disengage. But if they're coming out like that, that's when you go in and act, use these techniques, violence of action, get them down, get them neutralized, and get away. Well said. Until next time, guys, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. And stay adaptive and stay lethal. Hell yeah.